Enzo Ferrari long believed that his road-going cars should be front-engine V12s, with no exceptions. However, with a little persuading from his son, Alfredino, Enzo finally relented. Alfredino had a large role to play in the development of the Ferrari 750 Monza and had suggested to his father that they develop a 1.5 liter V6 engine for Formula 2 at the end of 1955. Sadly, Alfredino would never see his dreams realized and he tragically passed away from muscular dystrophy in 1956 at the age of 24. Enzo Ferrari eventually produced the car that his son had always dreamed of and named it in his honor, the Dino. There is a lot of controversy over the Dino throughout the years, whether it's a Ferrari or not, because Enzo branded it Dino. And I've had people ask me, why did he call it Dino after his son, if basically he didn't want the Ferrari name on it because it wasn't a 12 cylinder car. So let's get into how this Dino came to be uh, and why a lot of people would say they were Fiat's and all into that. So to start with the Fiat matter, basically in 1967, Enzo wanted to race a new V6 engine car in Formula 2. And in, at that time, you had to homologate 500 production cars. So basically, you had to make 500 cars with that kind of engine for street use in order to produce those race cars. And at that time, uh, Ferrari's total production per year was about 750 cars. So there was no way that they could meet that requirement on their own. So they had worked with Fiat in the past and they decided to collaborate with Fiat in order to produce the engines for the cars. Now, it's still a Ferrari design and the body and everything else on the car is all Ferrari. Uh, the Fiat did get the rights to use that engine in their Fiat Dino. So while the Fiat Dino and the Ferrari Dino do share the same engine, that's all they share and it's a Ferrari design. So the people who say it's a Fiat, no. <laughs> the engine's built by Fiat, but it wasn't, it's not a Fiat. Uh, so, and then to get into the, uh, why he named the car Dino, even though he didn't like, you know, the V6 cars, it wasn't his first choice. Basically, he wanted to separate the two because he was so true blooded racer, fast cars, that he just couldn't break away from that. And there's just a, a heavy debate, you know, he's not around to ask, but basically he just wanted to separate during that time his traditional front engine V12s from the smaller cars. As I've said in a lot of my videos, one of the reasons I love these cars is for the histories behind them. And not just the stories like, you know, Ferrari and his son, uh, but also for the personal histories on these cars. So this particular car has been a one owner car since 1975. The guy bought it, so this is a 72. And, uh, and fun fact, you can actually find on US models in the door jam, there's a little data plate that says the month and year that the car was made. So uh, if you ever have the opportunity to look in the door jam of a Ferrari and it's a US model, it will tell you exactly when the car was produced. Uh, but so this one as a 72, when it was three years old, it was sold to its current owner. And it's pretty crazy that somebody has owned this car since 1975, you know, it's usually these cars trade hands, sometimes quite a lot, but at least, you know, three or four or five times throughout the years. So that makes this one real special. Uh, and it's also in its original colors. So it was born with this yellow over black. At one point, the owner did paint it black and then repainted it back to yellow, which I think is a good choice because I love Dino's in yellow. Uh, another little fun fact about Dino's is they never originally came with any kind of Ferrari badging. So like you see on this car on the back, it says Ferrari, that is something that 
was added on afterwards. All of the, you know, the horn button, the center caps on the wheels, everything was always labeled Dino and not Ferrari, except for two places on the car. So on US models, right up here in the engine bay, there's the emissions control kind of sticker uh, or plaque, metal riveted plaque, and it says Ferrari on it. And then that same plaque I mentioned uh, earlier in the driver's door jam also says Ferrari on it. So that's the only two places in a Dino where you will originally see the Ferrari name appear. Dinos have an interesting dash. So basically when you see a Dino, uh, the, the material on the dash is commonly called mouse fur. And it's because it has this almost like velvety, but not quite so plush kind of feel to it. And this dash has faded over the years, so it's not quite so soft as it was once was. But the problem is a lot of times when shops redo the dashes on these cars, it's hard to find that original material. And a lot of the material, the like mouse fur replacement uh, is too dark nowadays. So these dashes when they were new were like a very dark gray. They weren't quite black, but they were close. And I see a lot of uh, Dinos now where the dash has been redone and it's black. And even though it looks great, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just not correct. So if you're looking for one of those like fully restored, really nice Dinos and you want one that's totally factory original, you have to make sure that the dash isn't pure black because that's not how dark it's supposed to be. Uh, there's a lot of these little nuances in these cars where uh, after years and years of being around them, I just, you know, I know it kind of instinctually now. It takes a while to learn, but uh, that's one of the things. So now you know, if you see one and it has a fully black dash, it, it still looks great. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's not factory correct. You know, there's just something about the cars of this era that have my heart. I mean, especially like these early 70s Ferraris, so the C4, the Dino, the Daytona, they're all some of my favorites. And I mean, of course, there's the, you know, the, the dream cars, the 57 Pontoon Testarossa, but seeing as I don't have 30 plus million dollars to drop on a car right now. The Dino and Daytona are top two favorite and they're radically different. Even though they were produced in the same kind of time, they're just so different from each other. Uh, not just when you look at them, but I mean, mid-engine V6 versus a front-engine V12, everything's so different. And the, the Daytona is like a freight train. I mean, it's heavy and big, but once you get it going, it goes. Whereas the, D D the Dino is like, it's quick, it's nimble. Uh, it's, it still produces that amazing sound right behind your head. It, got, it has light steering, unlike the Daytona when they don't have power steering, they're, they're a lug to get around at low speeds. Uh, but the D Dino is so light that you feel like even at low speeds with no power steering, it's it's not a pain, you know, it's no problem because it's such a light car. So it's just overall, it's more nimble and more kind of user friendly almost, even though like the Daytona is obviously more powerful, but something about driving a Dino, it's just special, you know, and, and it's I figured it was about time for Dinos to get the appreciation that they've long deserved because for so long they were underrated in my opinion. There was a long time where Dinos, in my opinion, were pretty undervalued and underappreciated. Uh, for instance, so I've been selling Ferraris for about 10 years now. My dad started our company 50 years ago, and uh, for a long time, they were much cheaper than they are now. The current owner, when he bought this car in 1975, he paid $9,000 for the car, which today is just unimaginable. Uh, and he also only drove this car, it only has 37,000 miles. So because he drove it so little and because they've finally kind of seen their heyday, the value of the cars has gone way up. Uh, but you know, there, I, 
I am glad that they're finally getting their time in the light, time to shine, because I think the Dinos have the best curvy lines to them, and they're fun to drive, they sound great, and they're just awesome cars. And they're the, you know, a car now where when you see one driving down the street as an auto enthusiast, pretty much anyone can universally, universally recognize it as a Ferrari. It doesn't, you know, they're not like, oh, what is that cool car? Like, you know what it is when it drives by. Uh, and so the Dino started production in 1968 with the 206 Dino, uh, and they only made 152 units of that car, but then they went to the 246 like this one, so it's a 2.4 liter six cylinder, uh, and in 71, they came out with the Targa top version like this one. So this is a 72, like I said, so it's an early Targa top car with low miles and Yellow and blue are probably two of my favorite color. I mean, blue is my favorite color in pretty much anything, but yellow and blue on these are my favorite. There's always been a question why one owner cars are so desirable. Uh, they sell for a lot more than if the exact same car went through five or six hands. And my theory behind it is basically like with this car, while it's not one of those fully restored concourse, you know, you're scared to drive it because it's just too nice kind of cars, it's also been just really well maintained and you get in it and drive it and it, it starts up and shifts smooth and you know, it's just a very pleasant experience. Uh, so you know that that one owner has taken really good care of it throughout its life. Uh, plus, with a one owner car like this one, the, the history behind it is unquestionable. The mileage, the low mileage on this car, everything about it, you know exactly what happened. There's no big like question marks or blanks in the history. And that's pretty important on these older cars too, because sometimes you can find some scary, you know, accident damage that's been cheaply bondoed over or something if you buy a car where you don't know the whole history behind it. So I, I'm pretty sure that's why everyone loves the one owner or low ownership cars. Uh, and you can just tell it's been loved and I mean who wouldn't love it so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you did please like and subscribe and stay tuned because we got a lot more coming very soon